How many know sometimes you gotta let go of your story to find your destiny? Amen. Amen. You gotta let go of your story to find <coughs> your God-given destinies. We're talking about God-given destinies, right? Sometimes we have a story about our lives and about our past and things that have happened to us, maybe negative, maybe tra traumatic things. This life is a brutal existence sometimes. And whether you're a, a man or a woman or a child, teenager, we're not exempt from the challenges of life. And, and the older we get, the more of a story we accumulate. But we have to be careful if our story is one of negativity and, and of disappointment, not to let that story define us. You know, but let's look forward to reaching our God-given destiny because God has a plan for all of our lives. And that's what this message is about tonight is, is going on forward in the things of God because God cares about you. And if we trust God, it gives him the, the um, right to start working in our lives. We have to give him that right. We have to say, God, I trust you. God, I, I believe in you. I'll tell you one thing. If you start pressing into God and start just spending time in, in the Word, it, it's not difficult. Spend time in the Word. Spend time in prayer. Keep coming to church. Keep communing and talking with the Lord. And, and um, just keep pressing into the spiritual things. We should be doing at least an hour to two hours a day of those spiritual things. Amen. If you do an hour to two hours a, a day, and then continue to come to church, walk in love. Whatever you do, don't get offended. Sorry. Right? That's the kicker. That's, that's the devil's ace in the hole. He'll whip that out on you when you're doing real good. And, and uh, um, don't get offended. And, and keep walking in love an hour to <coughs> two hours a day in the spiritual things. You're going to be all right. You're going to be more than all right. You're going to be over the top. Amen. You know, James 1, 5 says, if you lack wisdom, ask. And God will give you the wisdom. Mm -hmm. And so remember, spend time in his presence. And, and that way, your story will not define you or keep you or hinder you from reaching your God-given destiny. A lot of people let that happen, don't they? And so, for the believer... Our God-given destiny is not a matter of chance. It's a matter of choice. Let me say that again. For, for the believer, our God-given destiny is not a matter of chance, but it's a matter of choice. If you make the right decisions, you'll reach your God-given destiny, right? Our destiny is determined by decisions that we make and the wisdom that we follow. Remember, your story is still unfolding. I'm 52 years old. My story is still unfolding. There's still a lot left to tell. And I guarantee you, when my story is complete, it's not going to be at the age of 52. He, he, he flatlined. Or he, went, he, he just stayed neutral or whatever. I guarantee you, as my story unfolds, it will include more and more of God. <laughs> because the more of God that, that you get, the, the happier you are and, and the more at peace he, he can allow us to be, right? And so we have to remember that our, our destiny is determined by our decisions. And we make our decisions based on the wisdom that we have, right? What's, what's it say in the book of Proverbs? God's word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I'm thankful for people in my lives that have, like, that have, have imparted godly wisdom into me. And, and I tell you what, we all need people in our lives that will speak the truth into us. Mm -hmm. Because if we get into that other kind of wisdom and, and get and thinking wrong, our decisions are going to be wrong, and, and our direction is going to be wrong, and we're not going to be anywhere close to where God would have us be. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you one thing about God. His dreams for your life are bigger than your own dreams. You just got to get in there and, and, and do the things that are necessary. How many of you here think tonight that you could make a commitment to one hour to two hours a day, pray, read your Bible, 
um, sing worship songs to God. Just, just on purpose, just spend time in the spiritual things. Maybe that could be, maybe that could be a New Year's resolution, right? It would be, it would be one worthwhile. See, the thing about doing that, if you, you have to do it on purpose sometimes in the beginning because your flesh isn't used to it, and your flesh wants what the flesh wants, right? right? I remember uh, when I, was, I started training my flesh to, to listen to the spirit in me, <coughs> and, and uh, you know, my flesh, my, my carnal nature, I can sit down and watch two football games back to back, no problem. Just give me some Fritos and some Diet Coke. Uh, it's on. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> you know, no problem. I'll be in my glory. It's like, where'd time go? And then when it, but, but when it would come time to pray, uh, my, my, my flesh would just have the hardest time. You got, I had to do something about that. Right? Especially praying in the Spirit. Thank God for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And the ability to pray in the Spirit. And if, and if you don't understand that yet, stick around. You'll understand it. And you'll have that gift if you'd like to have that gift. Right? I remember uh, a long time ago, one of those Saturday afternoons, I watched, uh, this is after the Lord had spoken to my heart, and, and I was on fire for him, <coughs> way before I even knew, it, knew that I was going to be called to be a preacher. And I watched two ball games back to back, and I thought, well, I guess I should get some prayer in here today. The day's almost gone. And so I sat down on my couch. I think I actually kneeled down on my couch and I started to pray. And, and all of a sudden, guess what popped up in my mind? Five seconds into the prayer. Laundry. <laughs> my flesh would rather have done laundry than pray. I had a long way to go. Back then, I was a single parent with four children. And the, the washer was down in the basement. You want to talk about some laundry power? They were happy. Because <laughs> you work full time. You're single parent. You have 10, 12 hour days sometimes. <laughs> There's just not enough time. I mean, and, and, and I started to pray, and all of a sudden that big pile of laundry popped up in my mind. And I had this overwhelming urge to get down there and do some laundry. <laughs> and, and I didn't think about it when I was watching the game. I'm just keeping it real. Right? Yes. Your flesh. The part of you, the carnal nature of you, the, the um, worldly side of us that needs to be trained and renewed, it's going gonna, it's gonna to resist. <coughs> but what about the spirit of God within you? What about your born again spirit? It's going to speak loud too. Right. And the one you feed the most will win. Amen. If you feed that spirit inside of you and, 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 and um, learn to listen and honor the Holy Spirit inside of you and you just keep pressing in an hour to two hours a day. If you're not ready for that, then then, uh, then not much is going to happen for you. You'll, you'll be sit, you might be sitting here next year at this time in the same spot spiritually. But if you're ready to move on and, and get deeper in the things of God and watch God do in five seconds what you couldn't do in a lifetime, then you're going to need to spend time with Him. And, and press into his presence and read that word and listen to CDs. That counts. Amen. That counts, right? Some people say, oh, I don't like to read. Listen to the CDs then. Right? We got tons of CDs back there. Tons of them. Listen to the CDs. You, any, any CD that you like here, you can sign up for. You can, you, can, um, you can listen to them over and over again. You can get them on Facebook now. Amen. Watch them on Facebook. I mean, I'm giving you the truth tonight. It, God doesn't have a magic wand that he waves over anybody. He blesses desires. He blesses um, whatever you turn your hands to. Right? And the thing with God is the more you press into him, the easier it gets. Your flesh calms down. And then even your flesh will start to crave the things of God. How about that? Amen. But, but, some of you, you don't know anything about that kind of life. You just don't know anything about it. So, but you do now, and you're hearing what I'm saying because you're born again believers. And so now all you got to do is just make it happen. Absence of the of the want to sometimes of the flesh, right? Because you want to deep down inside. If you want the Holy God, the Creator of heaven and earth, to change your life dramatically 
in, in, in 2018, spend time with Him. Amen. Right? Yep. Spend time with Him. Sometimes people say, I don't got time for all that. <coughs> okay. That's your choice. But remember, our destiny is determined by our choices that we make. Right? And we have an opportunity to press into God. Remember, <coughs> your story is still unfolding before your eyes. Now, in James chapter 3, it gives us a different, the different types of wisdom that we have an opportunity to choose from. It says that there's a superficial wisdom. There's a earthly, which is a secular type earthly wisdom. Then there's a, a, a sensual wisdom. And then there's a devilish wisdom out there. There's a lot of that earthly, sensual. If you want to look it up later, it's James 3.16. Earthly, sensual, and devilish wisdom that you can, you, you got to stay away from. That's the way of the world. And like I said, you know, if you keep coming to church, I'm going to help you out with that. Because if you come here long enough, you'll find out that this pastor will tell you the truth, whether, whether it's, it's popular or not. You'll find out that I'm not too interested in being politically correct. I'd rather be biblically correct. Right? Amen. And, and we'll speak the truth and, and be able to challenge you. We don't preach sermons to condemn anybody or to step on anybody's toes. I haven't preached a, a sour, negative message a day in my life. My messages are messages of hope. Amen. Messages of encouragement. Messages to give people an opportunity to, to escape the snare of Satan and to get out of the <coughs> harm that he puts them in. And the only way to do that sometimes is the cold, hard truth. Mm -hmm. You can speak the cold, hard truth if you do it in love. Right? And if anybody knows about knows, knows me, I walk in love. I speak the truth in love. I, I don't have a, a malicious bone in my body. I want the best for all of you. Amen. But I'm not afraid to tell you if you need to hear something. Mm -hmm. I want to shake that earthly, sensual, and devilish wisdom out of your brain mm -hmm. and give you some good stuff Amen. that can help you because so you can make good decisions to follow God and and, and to, to realize what he can do for your lives. I'm, I mean, I, I mean to tell you, if it didn't work for me, it'll work for you. When I, when I gave my heart to God and I said, God, I'm going to serve you 100%, I had no clue he was going to bring me on this journey. None. But see, when you find out who it is God called you to be and you actually get to walk out his path for your life, there is no other substitute for that. In fact, I'll, I'll, I'm just thinking this tonight. You know when I am at my freest and my most joyous time, my most um, joyful and, and, and uh, uh, just the time that I love the best is when I'm standing up here. Amen. It, it, it's, this is, this is the, the cream of, <coughs> of, of the top here. This is the, this is the icing on the cake. And I spent a lifetime avoiding speaking in front of people. Why? <laughs> Following earthly, sensual, and devilish wisdom will take you further and further away from the will of God for your life. I was so far away from the will of God. And I'll tell you one thing. When God gets you back on track, he, like I said, he doesn't have a magic wand. He doesn't work in magic. He works, he works in faith. Your faith. It's all supernatural faith, but, but you bring a supernatural faith into you and, you, and you live by faith. The just shall live by faith. And you make good decisions. God's not going to make you make any decision. You make decisions based on, on good, godly wisdom because you love God, you honor Him, and you believe that His life for you is better than any life you could ever have. Amen. And plus, it's the honorable thing to do. Did He create you? Yes. Would you be here without Him? The ground that you walked in on is His ground. The air that we're breathing is His air. I mean... There's no life without God. Amen. So the honorable thing to do is to honor him and to serve him and to live for him. And when we do, you'll be passing by those carnal Christians. Carnal Christians. How many know carnal Christians aren't fun to be around? Carnal Christians don't like the preaching. Carnal Christians don't like the singing. <laughs> I don't know, Chris, that don't like going over two minutes of a service. You went over two minutes. 
You burnt my meatloaf. I didn't burn your meatloaf. Don't put meatloaf in if you're here. But they got always got something to complain about. And then you get someone all firing for God and, uh, and you know, and all joyful, you know, and, and they're all excited and you, you, you just gotta, just gotta just put blinders on. Right? Because you could be enjoying the church and think this is the greatest church in the world. Someone could come up to you and say, well, you know, it's not that great. Yeah. Hmm. Hey, you, you stay to yourself. <laughs> I believe it's great. Amen. So you get out of the church what you put into it. Amen. If it's great, it's great to you. Right. You can only receive from who you honor. Amen. Right? Amen. And, uh, but to be on fire for God, and to start seeing things happen for you, 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 can't, you can't put a price tag on that, can you? And so, what is the three types of wisdom that's in the world according, according to James 3.16? You've got an earthly wisdom, an essential wisdom, wisdom, and a devilish wisdom. And th this type of wisdom, the Bible says in James 3.16, results in envy and selfish ambition and strife. We're going to talk about strife here in a little bit. Stay out of the strife. Mm -hmm. yes. We ought to make a big circle with the word strife in it and a line going down through the middle. Amen. And you ought to stick it up on the refrigerator. Amen. And stick it up in your bathroom on your mirror. <laughs> and no strife zone. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't get rid of the strife, you're not going anywhere towards your God-given destiny. That's right. You're going the wrong way. In fact, if you get into strife, it will, it will allow the, the devil to thrust you or push you in wrong directions. And we don't need to be going in the wrong direction, do we? <laughs> and so the earthly, sensual, and devilish wisdom results in envy, selfish ambition, and then it produces confusion, which then opens the door for every evil work. Do you want every evil work in your home? No. Then stay out of the strife. And stay out of the selfish ambition, because that's the devil's atmosphere. Do you think that you can feel strife? You know you can feel those types of uh, strife and, and, and hard feelings when people have it towards one another. Have you ever walked into a room where two people might have been arguing, and, and, but they stopped because they might have heard you coming? And, and they weren't argue, arguing when you got in the room, but when you walked in the room, you could just, something, you could feel something went down. Right? Something went down. You want your home to be like something went down. No. Your home is, the, is supposed to be a place where your children feel safe. Okay. And, and, and a place where you can nurture them. And you can't nurture them in strife. The parents are the, are the spiritual leaders of the, of the children. Right? And so, but strife comes from earthly, sensual, and devilish wisdom and following the natural desires there's a better way, because James 3.16 talks about the wisdom from God. Now, the wisdom from God is peace-loving, courteous, gentle, reasonable, full of compassion, good fruits, actively encouraging good will between individuals. Are you going to actively encourage good will between individuals? In your home, right? In your church? What about your workplace? Sometimes I, I get people to say, hey, so-and-so go to your church? I say, yeah, yeah. They say, oh, man. I'm sorry. I feel sorry for you. And then sometimes people say, hey, so-and-so go to your church? I say, yeah. They say, boy, oh, man, they are the best workers. They are so nice. I'm like, oh, thank you. I like those kind. Yeah. <laughs> right? I mean, you're out there representing the Lord. Amen. You're out there representing God. And then if you're out there causing all that stuff out in the workplace, you think you're not bringing it home? We don't, we don't want that stuff in our home, do we? Yeah. Remember, we got to let go of our story to find our, our destiny. we got to let go of the old way, the old things, the, the discouraging things, the whatever. Maybe you've never tried it God's way before. Or maybe you have and you stopped. Maybe this time you're gonna you're all in, and you're never stopping on God. 
then that's when you're going to see the results, right? And so in Psalms 34, 14, don't turn there for time's sake, but it says this. It says, depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Depart from evil. Who needs to, to depart from evil? You do. Right? What, what evil is it talking about? Anybody ever here see, see Satan standing in front of you with horns and a pitchfork? Mm -mm. And smoke coming out of his nose? <laughs> what kind of evil? Earthly, sensual, and devilish wisdoms. These thoughts and these ideas and these suggestions and these, these, these strife-laden scenarios. Mm -hmm. You got to get out of that. Right? The Bible says to depart from evil. Don't worry about getting promote, promoted at work. Your promotion will come from the Lord. Amen. Don't get into that rat race and, and try to bite, scratch, and claw. Well, hopefully not bite, but scratch and claw <laughs> your way, your, your way up to the top. <laughs> Just do your job as if you're working for the Lord. Right? See, what, what I'm giving you tonight is, is, is godly wisdom. And if you, if, you, if you can apply it to your life and see where you can improve on something, then you're better off for it because you're going to make better decisions. Amen. And if you start making better decisions, you're going you're gonna to be going down towards your godly destiny. And you're going to find God's will for your life in a, in a bigger and better way. And so depart from evil. Do good. Seek peace and pursue it. How many know it takes God a while? God's patient. He'll work with you. He'll, he'll, he'll take time with you. He'll never give up on you. Just don't give up on him. Amen. There was a preacher that I, I know that uh, he had a traveling ministry, and, and he, would, he would minister different, uh, he'd be in places something like two or three years, and then he would move on, and, and uh, God would always lead him different, different <laughs> places. Some, some people have ministries like that where they're not settled in at one place their whole life. They're moving all over the place. And uh, my, my, my call is, is a pastor, so, you know, Lord willing, I, I'll be here my whole, my whole call, you know, because that's, that's who he called me to be, a pastor here. But some people, they move all over the place. And, and he knew, and this minister knew in his spirit that God was calling him to, to uh, move and to hit another phase of his ministry, but, but he wasn't getting the answer. It took a long time. And finally, one day, God spoke into his heart. Not, not audibly, just, just an inward witness. And, and he heard and he heard it just an inward witness that, okay, it's time to move, and here's where you're going to go. And when, when this preacher got this information, he was a little bit angry with God. Not at where he was going, but that it took so long. And he said this, he said, God, he said, that was a long time coming. He said, it was God's fault. I can help you out. It's never God's fault. So he said, God, that was a long time coming. And he said he heard the voice of the Lord in the most sweetest voice. Do you know what the Lord said? He said, well, you, you were a long time getting ready. Amen. We want to talk about a long time getting ready. I guess I could slip my hand up on that. In 35, right? 35 is where I, I, I got myself. I was AWOL for a lot of years. God never gave up on me. You know, I got really, really excited when the Lord told me I was called to be a pastor. Do you know why? Because I knew, I knew that I knew this very important thing. The gift and callings of God are without repentance. I knew it was still available to me. And I knew I knew I could still do it. No sense looking at the time lost, right? No sense looking back. No <coughs> sense letting my story keep me from reaching my destiny. Because I had a story. Amen. And it was a sad story. And it was a, a hardship story. But you know what? When God speaks into you, to your heart, forget the story. Get to the destiny. Amen. You want to talk about living. You want to talk about excitement. You want to talk about energy. <coughs> the world doesn't know anything about that kind of stuff. Right? Mm -hmm. And you know who, who the most unhappiest people in the world are? Carnal Christians. Yes. Christians that, that they're, they're Christians, but they're, they, everything they do is by the flesh and by their, their own natural desires. They're not happy people. The happiest Christians are those that are sold out to God. 
Trust that. When I was at Rayma, they would bring these um, missionaries in that were they were in Africa for like two years at a time. And they would they would come off the missions field. I mean, they're out there in the jungles. No ESPN. <laughs> No Big Macs. They eat, probably ate monkey meat. I don't know what they ate. Bugs. I'm talking deep, deep jungle. Right? They didn't have all these nice cars and these nice things. But I'm, I'm telling you, I'm just, I'm trying to help you out, give you some good wisdom, give you some understanding. Those people, when they came onto the campus, they lit the place up with excitement. They lifted that whole place. You know what? They could not wait to get back there. Because they were walking in the footsteps of, it doesn't matter, you, matter where you're at if you're walking in the footsteps of Jesus, you're going to be the happiest person in the room. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> when we took one, one year, how many teenagers did we take to Bogota? 13. Some people said, man, I thought you guys were crazy taking 13 teenagers. <laughs> I, didn't know, uh, I didn't know what we were doing. I mean, it was, it, you know, I bet I didn't think about it too long. <laughs> but I want to tell you what, it was my favorite missions trip I ever went on. Ever. And the first thing we did was we told, we told the teenagers, no cell phones, no computers, none of that stuff. It's just going to be us this week. And you know what? We had such deep, intimate, personal times with the Lord that the, one evening we were all sitting, sitting together, we were just talking. Isn't that a lost art? Just talking. Yeah. Just talking. Everybody's got to be texting nowadays. If you have a person that has five friends or ten friends, right? I'm going to get on there. They have ten, to five, ten friends, and, and currently they're with this group of five. They're with this group of five, not paying any attention to this group of five, but they're texting the other five. Right? And then another day, they're with this five over here, and they're not paying any attention to this five, but they're texting that five. It's like, why don't you just put the phone down and talk? Right? The problem with a lot of teenagers today, and even adults now, they don't know how to be alone and, and have some time to just, you know, we've got to monitor that in our children in our own lives too, right? We cut that stuff off. And we just sat there and we talked and we just enjoyed one another's company. And then all of a sudden, the presence of God fell on us. Am I right? Who all was there? Leslie? Jay? Christy? Am I right? Remember that night? <clears throat> the Holy Spirit fell on us. I never, I've never been in quite like that. And I mean to tell you, the one young lady started talking about just emptied her heart. You know who it was? It was Leah. Leah kicked it all off. Our daughter Leah. Just emptied her heart out there. And then all of a sudden, another teenager just spoke up and emptied their heart. And every time somebody would empty their heart, we would get around them and pray for them. And they were crying and they were laughing and they were just, I mean, it was just the most beautiful thing. We did it for like hours. And we didn't have one cell phone, one computer. We were right there at that time, devoted to God and devoted to one another in the footsteps of Jesus. And I'm telling you, it was beautiful. Amen. Well, you, can, you can get there. You don't have to even go on a mission trip to get there, but you can get there in your own life, in your own family, in your own marriages. Yes. Right? Yes. You just got to know, know that there's prizes to be won over good things to be won over on this side. And, and there's nothing boring about being a Christian. Only exciting things now and to come, right? Mm -hmm. And so this preacher said, he said, he said, that was a long time coming, and God said, well, you were a long time getting ready. Mm -hmm. However long it took you to get ready, just, just get there, right? Mm -hmm. And so we need to get on the same page with God in order to to get to where he wants us to be. Right. right? A lack of communication with the Lord will do, you, will do you no good. How many know God's given out wisdom freely? Amen. James 1 5 says, if you lack, ask. Amen. If you were not, if you were I would, you and I went to the mall 
And I said, okay, we're going to shop, and I'll meet you at 1 o'clock at, um, at this certain place. And, and if, I, if I went to Sears to meet you, and you thought I said J.C. Penny on the other side of the mall, and so I'm waiting at Sears, and you're waiting at J.C. Penny's when we thought we were supposed to meet, and, and we don't get any cell phone service. Got to throw that in there. <laughs> well, we're going to be waiting a while, aren't we? Yeah. I'm clear on the other side of the mall. A little bit of miscommunication. How many know God doesn't make mistakes? Right. If there's any miscommunication, it's on our side. That's right. He is always talking. He is always speaking to us. But we got to be good listeners. Now I want to. Um, I'm going to ask Leslie to come up, and we're going to read a story. You can read in Genesis. You can turn in your Bibles if you'd like to Genesis 13, chapter six. And while you turn there, this is the story about Abraham and Lot. Abraham was on a journey to get to the promised land. And his nephew Lot was with him. And there came a time in, in uh, their journey where there needed to be a separation. And that's what Leslie's going to read. It's, it's Genesis 13, and she's going to read verse 6 through 18. And um, I'll give you some time to get there. Genesis, that should be easy to get there. It's the first book. <laughs> one time I was told you got a minute yeah, you got a minute. one time <laughs> we were having a marriage counseling and uh, with, with people that didn't go to the church or anything and, and uh, we, we, we wanted to meet with them because we wanted to get them saved mm -hmm. then marry them we were sure they were going to get saved who wouldn't who would turn down eternal life who would turn down a God that loves them and a God that dies they just needed to know. But we were just going around, and in the first scripture I said, I said, let's go to Genesis chapter 13. And, and, and I, just, I just, just jokingly said, that's the first book. I'm glad I said it because the guy didn't know it was the first book. He knew nothing about the Bible. Right. Nothing. And so even in our, in our community today, there are people. There, we did a, a wedding not long ago, and there was all the girls. They were pretty young, like 8 to 10. Yeah. You know what? It was their first time ever in a church. Wow. Ever. So there's still a big harvest out there. A big harvest. And so, you got Genesis 13. I was long enough to find the first book of the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> Genesis 13, verse 6. And, we're, and Leslie's going to read this story. And the land was not able to bear them, that they might dwell together. For their substance was great, so that they could not dwell together. And there was a strife between the herdmen of Abraham's, Abram's cattle and the herdmen of Lot's cattle. And the Canaanite and the Perizzite dwelled in the land. And Abram said unto Lot, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee and between my herdmen and thy herdmen, for we be brethren. Is not the whole land before thee? Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou wilt take the left hand, then I will go to the right, or if thou depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. And Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere. Before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest unto Zoar. Then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, and they separated themselves the one from the other. Abram dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelt in the cities of the plain and pitched his tent toward Sodom. But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. And the Lord said unto Abram, After that Lot was separated from him, Lift up now thine eyes, and look from the place where there art northward, and southward, and eastward, and westward. For all the land which you see to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. And I will 
make thy seed as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. Arise, walk through the land in the length of it, and in the breadth of it, for I will give it unto thee. Then Abram removed his tent, and came and dwelt in the plain of Mamre, which is in Hebron, and built there an altar unto the Lord. Yeah, thank you. Okay, that account is a very, very important story. In verse 7, it says that there was strife between Abram and Lot. And then in verse 8, Abram said, let there be no strife. And then in verse 8, or in verse 9, Abram said, separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. And so there was strife. What is strife? An ongoing um, feud. Constant hard feelings, uh, just not getting along. And, and both Abram and Lot were very wealthy, and they had a lot of cattle, and there was a battle for the land, for the grazing land. And, but one thing we can know about Abram, he was the spiritual one. Lot was not the spiritual one. Lot operated with the earthly, sensual, and devilish wisdom. That's, that's how, he, that's how he, he did things. Abram was, was a godly man. And when Abram recognized the strife, what's the first thing he said? He said, let there not be any strife. I don't want the strife. See, Abram was on a journey to reach his promised land, and he knew that if there was strife there, he wasn't getting it anyway. That's right, amen. God will not lead you through in strife. Right? Whose job was it to get rid of the strife? Abram. The spiritual one. You might get in these battles with these less spiritual people. Don't let the less spiritual people get you in the strife. They can be mad at you. Then all you have is one person being mad at another. That's right. But if you let them drag you down into the swamp and get you into this ongoing stuff, if, if, if you let how they treat you cause you to disrespect them in return, <coughs> then you're in strife. Mm. And you're not, you're temporarily halted from moving forward in the things of God. Abram knew it. Abram said, let's get the strife out of here. Right? Yes. And so what was his solution? It was, a, it was a godly wisdom solution. He said, Lot, you choose the land that you want to go to. And wherever you go, I'll go somewhere else. Does that sound like godly wisdom? 100% godly wisdom. And so Lot looks up his carnal, natural, fleshly eyes, and he sees the land of Sodom and Gomorrah, and it was prime real estate. It was, it was lush and prime and well watered, and Lot, <coughs> Lot made a Lot decision. He said, uh, uh, I'll, I'll take that. Reminds me of that, that um, cartoon, Daffy Duck one time <laughs> was in a cave and he came across upon a, a treasure and he just changed it. He just got crazy. And he was like, mine, mine, all mine. Anybody remember that one? Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> mine, mine, all mine. And he just, just changed it. You know, Lot's like, okay, old man. Boy, you're not too smart. But where did Lot choose? Sodom and Gomorrah. The most wicked in place on the planet. You can read a little bit down further. You can see what happened a lot to Sodom and Gomorrah. A wicked place. But right after Abram got the strife out, God comes on the scene. I mean immediately. Immediately. Someone say immediately. Immediately. I mean, he, he humbled himself. Always humble yourself because God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. You be the humble one. And as soon as he said, you choose, you choose. I don't want no strife here. Lot went his natural worldly way, chose Sodom and Gomorrah. As soon as that decision was made, God came on the scene and said, look, Abram, look, 
look from the north to the south to the east to the west as far as you can look that's your land that's what I've given you he couldn't see it before but when the strife got out he could see it amen and God said I want you to walk through it walk through the length and the breadth and the breadth of it walk through it walk through it it's your land I'm giving it to you and I'm giving it to your seed to your children see what you're doing affects your children that's right I pray that I live a life that affects my grandchildren's, my grandchildren and their children, if the Lord tarries. There's just more than me in this right now. It, it's our heritage, Amen. right? And I, and I want them to have a godly heritage. And so I'm not going to be the one that drops the ball. None of them are going to drop the ball, right? And so, but he said, he said immediately, Look at this here. Look at verse 9. <clears throat> Abram said, Is not the whole land before thee? Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou wilt take the left hand, then I'll go to the right. If thou departs to the right hand, then I'll go to the left. And then Lot lifted up his eyes, and he chose that land, right? <coughs> look at verse 14. And the Lord said unto Abram, after that lot was separated from him, what, what was lot? The strife, right? God said, lift up your eyes and look from the place where thou art, northward and southward and eastward and westward. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to who? thy seed forever and I will make the seed as the dust of the earth and if a man can number the dust of the earth then shall any seed then shall thy seed be of yours be numbered I mean what a blessing Amen. if that don't tell you to get the strife out nothing will <clears throat> my whole purpose of this whole message was to get you to this one place I put all the bells and whistles all around it with the fancy, nice, cute title and everything, but just really, just to get you to this point, just this, get the strife out. If I, name, if I, if I title the message, get the strife out, people are going to tune it out. Hmm. Nobody, ain't nobody want to hear about no strife. <laughs> but you can, I got to bring it in here, right? right? Get the strife out. You got to get it out. You say, well, I just don't know how I'm going to do it in this situation. Pray. God's promised you wisdom in James 1 5. But whatever you do, because when you get that strife out, you're going to start seeing and experiencing all that God has for you. Isn't that good? Yeah. Look at Psalms 37 4. Can you, can you get the strife out? Will, will you get this right now? Yeah. Remember, remember, my messages are pastor messages, so shepherding messages, and this is a this is a valuable message. Don't let strife in your life. Right. Don't. That's your boss, your your coworkers. If one of your co if you work in an office and one of your coworkers steals your stapler, and you know they stole it. You just know they took your stapler. Don't go take their stapler and hide it from them. Right? Oh, forget it. <laughs> well, you know what I mean. Don't repay evil for evil, right? You say, well, I would never be that petty. Yeah, you would, but some people would. It's the small boxes full of the line. It's these little things. How many have ever been involved in a little thing that turned out to be a, turned into a big thing? Mm -hmm. Right? How many of you ever fall into a big thing right off the bat? Yeah. Happens both ways. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> Look at Psalms 37 4. So, are you going to keep the strife out? Yes. Promise? Yep. Yes. That would make me happy as your pastor. I'm going to do the same thing. Because we all have challenges, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you it's important. One of the greatest faith teachers there ever was was Charles Cash. He went home to be with the Lord. You know how great of a faith teacher he was? 
One day he told his family, he said, I'm going home to be with the Lord tomorrow. He went in and, 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 in his um, room and he, he laid down and went to sleep. And, and um, his, his heart just stopped beating and, and he went to be with the Lord. <laughs> Called his shots the whole way through. One day early in Charles Capps ministry, he went to this mechanic. And the mechanic um, charged him too much, ripped him off. And he knew that he did. And Charles Capps was driving down the road, and he's like, I'm never going back there again. And that, that guy, I am never, and he's just upsetting this mechanic. Nobody likes to get ripped off. And the Lord said, the Lord said, you better watch yourself, Charles. Better watch that. Better watch that. Don't think like that. Don't act like that. The Holy Spirit actually helped him. Why? <coughs> was God saying, go back to that mechanic and get ripped off again? No. What was God saying? Guard your heart. Don't let that strife in there. Because that, that's what the Bible say. Above all else. Someone say above all else. Above, above all else, what? Guard your heart. It is your number one priority. <clears throat> the number one priority in your life, above all else, is guarding your heart. And the Lord did not want Charles Capps getting that strife in there, getting that hard feelings in there, and, and turn into bitterness and sourness, and, and God needs him to, to minister to people and, and bring these fresh revelations to Charles Capps, and every time he drives down on this lane, he sees that garage, and he turns into some kind of beast monster, because what happened, right? Even 15 years ago, whatever, however long, I mean, some people hold on to things forever. Some people are mad at people, and they don't even remember why they're mad at them. I actually met a guy at the tree service. He said, I hadn't talked to my brother in 40 years. And then he was trying to figure out why he was mad. He couldn't remember why he was mad. I knew we were mad at something. Oh. <laughs> Don't be like that, right? Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall inherit the earth. And so, Psalms 37, 4, right? It says, delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. Now, would anybody agree with me that this is a this is a peculiar verse? I mean, as far as like it says, delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. One day I was meditating on this scripture, and I was like, well, what's delight myself in you? What, what do you what exactly do you mean by that? And so I got the strong concordance out. Of course, the old testament is written in Hebrew, and I looked up the word delight, and, it, and it, it's the word that says to to imitate or to mock. <coughs> so when it says, delight yourself in the Lord, it says to imitate and to mock. And I still wasn't getting it. Because they say, delight yourself in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. If you want the desires of your heart, all you got to do is figure out how to delight yourself in the Lord. Right? That's the key. And finally, the Holy Spirit spoke up in my heart and he said, it's like this. He said, it's like a, a, you take a little boy, a, 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 a a, a, a little boy that has a father. That little boy will idolize his father. He'll, he'll look up to him. His father could be the scrawniest little dude, could never beat, he, he couldn't beat anybody up. But his son's like, my dad's the strongest dad in the world. Right? And if the dad's a carpenter, the, little, the boy got a little play carpenter set. He's walking around. And every, everything he does, he imitates his, his dad, and he, and he follows him, and he wants to be just like him. Nobody can be his dad. That's what that means. Delight yourself in the Lord. Imitate him. Be like him. Search him. Honor him with all your heart. And then the desires of your heart will come true, because your desires will then match his desires. Amen. Right? One way that we can get on the right path, path is to say this. God, your destiny is my destiny. Your happiness is my happiness. See, we're not here to merely like a, make a living on this earth. We're here to enrich the world with God's love. That's all I have. Would you rise, please?